Hey everyone, welcome to the very first episode of Sex Bitch. I'm your host Sarah. This is the first in a series of videos exploring topics regarding human sexuality, gender, and more. I'd like to give a shout out to my Sociology 21 Human Sexuality class at Pierce College. And Professor Fuller, since technically this series is going to be based off of hmm, information that has been given to us and covered over this semester. Warning, this series will feature sensitive topics like rape, sexual assault, pornography, sexual orientation, gender identity, and more. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Here's a question for you. Are male and female opposites? Is there a biological evidence suggesting that they are? We have demonstrated that a one day old human demonstrates sexual dysmorphism in social mechanical perception. Male infants show a stronger interest in mechanical objects while female infants show a stronger interest in the face. In short, some scientists believe that girls and boys are biologically different, not just based on genitalia, but on interests and behavior as babies. Some scientists believe that humans are born different based on biological sex alone, and that it has nothing to do with society or some sort of influence on the child by something or someone else. That's the BQ of the day. Are boys and girls born with these specific gender roles or is it outside influence that is doing the work here? Is it nature or is it nurture? Hmm. In nature versus nurture, it turns out both play a key role in shaping who we are and who we grew up to be. So it's not nature versus nurture, it's nature and nurture. Sapolsky's Trouble with Testosterone debunks the myth that testosterone causes aggressive behavior in boys. In reality, it's not biology and it's not the environment. It's actually the interaction between both biology and the environment. And it turns out violence is really more complex than just one hormone. Biology is meaningless outside the social context in which it occurs. The takeaway here is both sexes are not opposites, even if differences hmm, precede socialization. Now, back to nature versus nurture for a sec. The debate regarding nature versus nurture refers to the ongoing discussion of the respective roles of genetics and socialization in determining individual behaviors and traits. Moving on. Regardless of the physical differences we've seen between men and women, there are actually very few differences between the male and female brain. We all have the same brain. It's just our sexual organs that are different. Mind blown! Here's a good word for you guys, neurosexism. This reflects and reinforces cultural beliefs about gender, like the belief that girls can only like pink, play with dolls, and are not as valuable, and shouldn't be entitled to the same rights and opportunities as men. The same belief that boys are aggressive, violent, sexual predators, and that men who are not are seen as gay or weak, or even worse. Here's a little, little known fact. Males and females start with identical buds that are usually form, that usually form into male or female reproductive organs. These rep reproductive organs, the eggs are for the girls and the sperm is for the boys, are generated from identical fetal tissue. The thing is, sex and gender are actually two different things. Sex 
are the chromosomes, which is XX, which means girl, and XY means boy, hormones, and reproductive organs that come along with your biological sex based on genitalia. Gender is actually just social characteristics and acceptable ways of behavior and presentation of oneself. Masculine or feminine, pink or blue, Barbie and lip gloss, or G.I. Joe and saggy pants. The only way sex and gender are the same is that they both, they are both social constructions. While sex is seen as biological and unchangeable, the way we interpret sex is a social construction. So it's all the way in the way, it's all the way, in the way we think and interpret socially acceptable gender roles for boys and girls. Now, male and female are not the only sex out there. Sometimes there is both. That's where intersex comes into play. People who are born intersex possess defining characteristics from both male and female genitalia. Chromosomes and or hormones typically associated with one sex with external genitalia associated with the other sex. But this is more than just chromosomes. There are other medical conditions that are part of the intersex family. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia or CAH is a condition related to steroid hormone production that masculinizes masculinizes individuals with the female double X chromosomes. There is also sensitivity syndrome or AIS. This is a condition that made patino feminine despite her Y chromosome. This causes children with XY chromosomes to develop female genitalia, also known as the vagina, or as I like to call it, the pussy. <laughs> and then there is hyperphermatism and gonna or sorry uh, or gonadal dysgenesis abnormal gonadal development which refers to the whole variety of conditions in which individual anatomies include jonads or secondary sex characteristics of both sexes. Social emergency! Social emergency! Social emergency! How do we deal with these people socially and medically? <laughs> well, here's the thing. The American Academy of Pediatrics calls them social emergencies. Children who are born intersex are often subject to be placed and to have sex reassignment surgeries in order to be placed into one of two natural sexes, male or female. These surgeries are often performed before the child is old enough to consent and is usually done without consent at all. These, the sex given to these kids are actually chosen for them, not by them. One family that was interviewed on ABC News Nightline said that they adopted a boy out of state that was born intersex. They said they told the doctors not to perform the surgery. Unfortunately, while the child was still in the custody of the state, they did it anyway and changed his sex to female genitalia. And guess what? The child actually ended up identifying as a boy, not a girl. Sadly for kids like him who were put through this kind of sex reassignment surgery too early on, the genitalia they have is permanent. Sex reassignment surgery 
on intersex people mm -hmm. is irreversible. The question here is, is this really medically necessary? Or are they just social surgeries, like facelifts and nose jobs? When bodies don't fit into a pre-existing notion of male and female, most people will force them to, even if it involves a knife. And here is where this gets really fucked up. Clitorises that are longer than 0.9 centimeters and penises that are shorter than 2.5 centimeters must be fixed. What? You're saying that if I have a large pussy or a dude has a one centimeter dick, we need it to be fixed? Like a fucking phone needs to be fixed if it doesn't do what you want right away? Man, that's some fucked up shit right here. In 2012, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders officially changed the term gender identity disorder to gender dysphoria to describe emotional distress that can result from, quote, a marked incongruence between one's experience slash expressed gender or assigned gender, unquote. In other words, transgender. Notable people who have gender dysphoria are LGBT rights activist and TLC reality star Jazz Jennings, who was diagnosed and started transitioning at the age of five, and reality TV star, stepfather to Kim Courtney and Khloe Kardashian, and father of Kendall and Kylie Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner. Now, this is something I'm still having a hard time grasping right now. Um, in 1973, homosexuality was similarly disclassified as a mental disorder. The current change suggests an evolution of thought on the matter of gender and that may influence not only many people, not only how many people see themselves, but also how they are perceived by others. Yeah, we'll see. Transgender is an umbrella term for a person whose gender identity and gender expression and behavior does not conform to that typically associated with the sex they were assigned to at birth based on genitalia. This means that what is between the legs does not match what is between the ears and in your heart. Transgender is not to be confused with transsexual. Transsexual is actually someone who has already had surgery, undergone hormone and or other treatments in order to physically change his or her body into the gender they identify with. Now this term is more recent than the others I just listed, but it's still very important. Someone who identifies as genderqueer does not identify with traditional ideas of gender, masculine or feminine. They, they may identify somewhere on a spectrum or as someone outside the masculine feminine binary. Wearing clothing typically associated with a different gender and that culture is known as cross-dressing. 
someone who cross dresses mm -hmm. may not actually be transgender actually they may actually identify with the sex they were assigned at birth this has nothing to do with sexual activity or orientation now this i have a hard time understanding this is because from my experience cross-dressing is directed more at men who wear dresses makeup and heels rather than women wearing pants and rock band t-shirts like i'll go out on the street wearing jeans and a black green day shirt it's no big deal but when a man goes out wearing a gucci skirt into your heels they are automatically cross-dressing that's confusing for me Now, on to the fun part. Drag kings and queens. These are individuals who dress as a different gender in order to entertain, such as like in a bar or a club. <laughs> drag queens are men who dress as women for entertainment purposes, and drag kings are women who dress as men for entertainment purposes. I believe that what really brought the drag king and queen trend into the mainstream popularity was RuPaul and RuPaul's Drag Race. It is actually so funny because the drag queens I see look so much like women. I was actually at LA Pride last summer when I was about uh, 19 years old. Yeah, 19. I was with my mom. We were in line at the Johnson & Johnson booth for sunscreen and I saw this beautiful what I thought to be look like a woman wearing this beautiful sparkling dress, beautiful smile, rocking body. I said to my mom, she's hot. And my mom said, Sarah, that's a dude. <laughs> oh my God. Seriously, I give props to the drag queens because you guys really look like authentic women. Really had me fooled. I'm just kidding. I'm fine. Moving on now. Boys and girls are increasingly participating in the same types of activities in their schools and communities. Many teachers, parents, and administrators seek to avoid the worst effects of gender separation. What is it? I don't know. Gender roles refer to behaviors considered appropriate for individuals of a particular gender. Until recently, it was actually assumed that there were only two separate paths for men and women. Gender-based division of labor reinforced the idea of differences in men and women's abilities. Sally can be promoted. She's a woman. She's too bastard to handle this company. A woman can't run my taxes. They're no good at math. A woman can't be a scientist because she'll screw up the project and blow up the earth. Hillary Clinton can't be president. She's a woman. Women get so emotional at her and only think about themselves. She will run this country into smithereens. Yeah, right. In the 20th century, evidence established that gender roles are strongly influenced by culture. As societies increase in size and complexity, women usually become subordinated to men. Men in the penthouse, women in the basement. The origins of gender inequality in most modern societies can actually be traced through the feudal period. If men and women believe things to be real, they are real in their consequences. Okay. But this brings up a really good point here, guys. If we believe men and women are different, then we build an institution around this exact idea. As socially competent members of our society, we see bodies 
through cultural lenses of sex and gender, and we shape actual bodies to our expectations. My advice, take the gender stereotype glasses off and put the reality glasses back on. Start seeing people who they are and not only what you see from an outside perspective. People are much more than what you see. Okay, now, here's the last question of the day. Are there practices you engage in to shape your body to fit the expectations of our culture? Plastic surgery to make yourself look a certain way? Wear something you weren't comfortable with just because you thought every that was what you're what you're supposed to do have sex when you didn't really feel ready because you thought that was what everyone expected of you let me know in the comments below hmm if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and please hit that subscribe button press it just do it okay that's it I'll be back soon with more videos. I'm Sarah Rose. Peace out.